Hello and you welcome to another special episode of the AAU Talks, the prime uh, talk show of AAU TV, uh, the voice of higher education in Africa. My name is Ajiman Otredako. You will bear with me that we've experienced uh, paradigm shifts in the higher education community towards policies like TVET, um, STEM education, a whole lot. And all these rational policies are here to give us that facelift to our higher education system. And today I'm glad to have a very special guest in the house with me to discuss the transformative agenda of higher education in the Gambia. A very special one coming to you. So don't go anywhere. I'll go for a short break. We'll come back. I'll let you know who he is. And then do the discussion. Stay with us. We'll, we'll be right back. You welcome back to AAU Talks, the voice of higher education in Africa. My name is Ajiman Otredako, and we're discussing the transformative higher education agenda in the Gambia. As I said earlier, I have with me a special guest in the house. So he was here um, some months ago, and today I have with him one-on-one. -on -one. He is um, Maud A.K. Um, Seka. Seka. You're welcome to AAU Talks. Thank you. Glad to me. have you. I'm happy to be on you. So last time we were here with Honorable Bandara, and I couldn't get a chance to interact with you today. It's you and I on the set about the transformative agenda of higher education in the Gambia. But, but let's let's start with um, your role. So he is the permanent secretary for higher education and research and technology in the Gambia. And you, you are wondering, how, what is the meaning of permanent secretary? So he will tell us more about the role. So um, you can tell us what really goes into being a permanent secretary of higher education, research and science technology in the Gambia. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as you know, the Gambia has an Anglophone um, ad administrative system. Okay. The government is made up of the president, the vice president, secretary general, and head of the civil service. Okay. And then you have the ministers, the permanent secretaries, and the like. Okay. The reason why the issue of permanent secretary is coined that way mm -hmm. is that they are supposed to be there, whether there's a new change of government or otherwise. So. Mm -hmm so that they can have the institutional memory mm. to guide the next minister. So ministers come and go, but permanent secretaries are supposed to be permanent in their positions. Great. Yeah. That, that, that's so insightful. I think that that would also curb all the political nuances and whole depth of vision. Yes. And then their main role is also to be the technical as well as the administrative head of the ministry. So they are the advisor, technical advisor to the minister, mm -hmm. but they are also responsible for the day-to-day -day affairs yeah. of the running of the ministry. Okay. Yeah. So last time I met you, it was about the STEM program that you were, the Gambia was partnering with KNUS in Ghana to develop the, the, the institution in the Gambia. Yes. Is it the same quest for this time or you have a different agenda here in Ghana? No, it's the same thing because <coughs> we are upgrading the GTTI Okay. which is the Gambia Technical Training Institute mm. in the Gambia into a university of applied science, engineering, and technology. Great. And if you, if, you, if you follow the words, they are carefully chosen to depict the element of bringing relevance to education in the Gambia. Mm. So we have a partnership with KNUSC. Okay. They are the ones who are, who are running the lectures, who are doing the lectures, as well as delivering the certificates mm. but we also have a partnership with Demonford University okay. they are also responsible for quality as well as also having an entrepreneurship dimension in the training mm. which is a unique opportunity but at the end of the day when you do your bachelor's in engineering mm -hmm. and you are also well equipped with entrepreneurship when you graduate you should be able to go and work for yourself mm. create employment with others work for government or work for the private sector mm. but at least the issue of industry requirements would have been addressed in your training program so that you become relevant okay. and employable now in your submission you mentioned that the, the gtti is a carefully crafted name because it's standard it's, it's you set you set mm -hmm. that's the new name of the new that's the you name set. of the so new university okay so which is transforming GTTI into a University of Applied Science, Engineering, and Technology, mm. USET. Okay. Yes. So I was thinking about what were the policy um, 
information, the research development, and evidence that actually led to the transformation of GTPI to GTEC? What was the data? Yeah, we, we realized that, uh, like I told you, relevant, if you want to make education relevant, mm -hmm. you have to address the issue of skills. Yeah. You also have to, um, how do you call it, make sure that when, when, when your trainees graduate, mm -hmm. they can also be employable. Yeah. So the linkage between the program and industry has to be very strong. Mm. Yeah. No, so some of the issues that we, we, we will say uh, face is that industry is left uh, at, at the different level and then the, the consultation and the involvement is lower. How different was it done in the Gambia in the creation of the GSEX and stakeholder involvement? Yeah, in the development of the curriculum, you have to address that in the development of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Because if you are designing programs that are going to be serving industry, mm -hmm. you have to co-op them yeah. at that initial stage yeah. so that their concerns and the gaps in the industry are addressed. So the programs should be talking to what it should be should be delivering on what industry needs. Mm. Yes, so that when people leave, industry will be patiently waiting for them to get them a job. It is amazing that T T Vet or that's advanced skills and the science and technology is seen as one big beacon to create more employable skills for graduates. But there's a question on the design of these um, programs to really guarantee um, employability. How unique has it been done in the case of the Gambia? Um, yes, like I told you, under normal circumstances in most universities, there is the perception of the programs that are there are mainly general education, BS engineering. Sure. But I, I, I call them more or less desktop engineers. Mm -hmm. hmm? Mm -hmm. But these people cannot go to the next level of applying what they have learned. Mm. If you want to move to the next level of allowing them to apply what they have learned, you also have to have a very strong linkage with industry. You, you have to address the issue of um, how they call the relevance in the program. Um, some of the gaps that industry is looking for, you have to make sure you train the people who are trained uh, uh, would, would fit a feeling those gaps when they graduate. Mm. So, so is that issue of relevance, I think that is more on emphasis in terms of whatever we are doing as a transformation. Mm. Another concern is about quality assurance in uh, the new initiative that you, you are creating with the support of KMUSD, the lecturing and also the research rendering. How are you trying to create that uh, regular, continuous improvement of the quality in this case? Like I told you, um, we have these two, two universities partnering, and each of them has an inbuilt quality assurance mechanism okay. in their programs. KMUSC programs in Gambia will be the same as KMUSC programs in Ghana. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So in fact, I'll use this opportunity also to uh, request for students who cannot have access in some of these universities mm -hmm. to start venturing into going to Gambia. Really? Because you'll be having the same certificates as KMUSC in Ghana. So that is one dimension. I think the other dimension is that you also have Damon Ford University, which is also one of the leading universities, even in UK, yeah. in terms of level of employability of their graduates. Mm. So they are also coming up with an entrepreneurship component. Mm -hmm. In that entrepreneurship component, they will have a disruptive and innovative lab, innovation lab, mm -hmm. where students can be tested to solve problems that are affecting society. For instance, you take uh, the case of dump site. Mm -hmm. We have an issue of dump site in Gambia mm -hmm. where a lot of these, uh, um, how to call it, a um, lot of these um, items are dumped in a place. Garbage is in a and the, Yes, garbage, yes. So transforming that into something that will benefit society mm -hmm. is a practical case in yeah. point yeah. that can that can create employment also mm -hmm help society, it resolves a menace. Mm. So these are some of the practical things that some of the students will be tested mm. to make sure that uh, when you graduate, you would have had enough skills 
that is equip you that will be equip that will equip you to move to whatever level of uh, employment you want mm. you know the ideas are so amazing that i'm curious to know what are some of the existing policies or education policies that you have in gambia perhaps maybe they are the reasons why you are doing all these amazing uh, initiatives uh, yes we have a sector-wide policy which is for both ministries that's ministry of basic and senior secondary education as well as ministry of higher education so it's like a joint sector-wide policy okay. then we have uh, a, a policy for ministry of higher education mm -hmm. that is deriving from this sector-wide policy as well as the national development plan mm. and the intention is to make sure you develop the human capital base of the country mm. yeah okay. and then you have you have a research policy you have a TVET policy which is a modernized TVET policy that is just recently developed yeah and the intention is to address capacity gaps in training to address the modernization of the training equipment that the students would be using mm -hmm. so that uh, they keep up to speed with technology when they graduate the employment will be waiting for them great yes great and also to expand the capacity this expansion of capacity is not only restricted to uh, tvet institutions but it's also uh, also reflective of the higher education institutions like the university of the gambia mm. so we'll be taking a scope into all of the <coughs> policies mentioned by uh, a mod but we'll also talk about the challenges as well that they are facing and how they are addressing them at the moment and let's fix it down so let's don't, don't go anywhere stay with us we'll be right back and i will know more about the challenges and the way forward stay with us Welcome back on AAU Talks. My name is Ajiman Otrodako, and we're talking about the transformative higher education agenda in the Gambia. And I'm here with Maud A.K. Saika, and and we we're talking about the policies that were um, created in the Gambia, which are influencing all these amazing initiatives. The next is the, the, the challenges. I know you have challenges. Share with us some of the challenges and how you are going about them. Um, initially, I think the, the, the biggest challenge will be funding challenges. Yeah. Because, of course, when you have this kind of a transformative agenda mm -hmm. where you need massive investment in infrastructure, massive investment in equipment and learning materials, mm -hmm. of course, that is one of the biggest challenges. Um, we also have realized a technical challenge in terms of the number of enrolled students for USET, because initially some of the criteria that we have now currently includes um, further mathematics. Yeah. In the Gambia, the, that, that uh, subject is not well taught. Oh, okay. So you have that concern which we are trying to work around. Mm. But in, in, in addition to that also, at the national level, the capacity also is a concern, mm. especially in the area of Tibet. So in order to raise the capacity, national capacity of Tibet trainers, there should be a conscious effort to have collaboration with institutions like AU to have a technical assistance program where some countries who are strong in Tibet, for instance, mm. can provide capacity to assist in the process. Mm. But in the meantime, the other, uh, other thing that we are doing is also uh, we want to also train the Tibet people. And if you look at the setup between um, GTTI transformation to USET, mm -hmm. what we are now aiming at is to have a situation where um, you have middle level certificates, middle level uh, skills, train as certificate and diploma level, mm -hmm. but they should also have the advantage of doing a degree program if they choose to, to go the academic way. Mm. So there is going to be a career path for those people who want to pursue education to leave from certificate diploma to BSc, master's, and probably PhD level mm. in, in areas that relate to applied science and tech. Mm. You know, from my point of view, I, I, it, it, it may seem as uh, a deliberate effort from the Gambia to scrap Tibet and perhaps 
to raise the bar to university and apply for technology. Is that the case here to scrap Tibet? It's, it's, not, it's not the case. We are running both concurrently. Mm. Yes, because even with Tibet, what we have done is we have increased the absorptive capacity of Tibet institutions mm -hmm. by coming up with two additional Tibet centers mm -hmm. as well as upgrading two existing Tibet centers. Mm -hmm. And the policy in Tibet is that it should be decentralized mm -hmm. to all the regions in the country. Yeah. So we have about four Tibet, five Tibet institutions that will be operating now countrywide, that is public public institutions. Mm -hmm. And the intention is to take it to the other regions that don't have Tibet and build Tibet institutions. Mm. Uh, that, that draws a concern of how is um, the Gambian government also gr uh, bringing in the participation of private, private universities also to run such courses, programs. Is there any initiative like that? No, yes, you have a uh, lot of private sector operators, but like public institutions also, some of them are constrained by either funding or capacity, as I have said. Mm. So the intention of upgrading the capacity as well as, as the, 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 ab the capacity to absorb more students, that's one dimension, but the capacity to train and have good trainers so that when you train your, your products can be marketable mm. is also lacking in some instances. So if we are addressing the capacity gap, it has to be addressed at the national level. Mm. Yeah. You know, the outlook on gross HR enrollment ratio, mm. it's not really looking so good for the African continent. Mm. If we zoom in down to inter-country affairs, that's also not looking good. How do you plan to massify ed higher education with USET in terms of expanding the gross HR enrollment ratio? In Gambia, I think that is one of our strengths. Mm. We have done very well in terms of enrollment ratios. Mm. Um, people who are a, a school age going, almost about 80% of them are going to school. Mm. So that's one big advantage we have. Mm. But that in itself creates another challenge. The challenge is creating is because you had a stagnant higher educational institutional capacity mm -hmm. over the years. We need to invest in those capacities yeah. to make sure that those who are graduating from the lower base can be absorbed by the higher educational um, uh, institutions. You, you mentioned that uh, the USET is now the advanced uh, vessel to transform the students and make them highly employable. And also with um, the university partnership you have with the UK, uh, the Monday. Devon Ford the University. Sure. That, that's the professor from there. Yes. He's sitting right here. That's amazing. Yeah. So but the, the, the question comes to how well are we using that opportunity to create infrastructure, uh, uh, entrepreneurial infrastructure by USET? Has there been any effort towards that? Yes, because they are also coming up with their capacities. They will be coming up with their uh, lecturers in entrepreneurship. And then they will be working with them on um, KMEFG uh, lecturers. So the programs will be faced in such a way that they talk to each other. Mm. And, and also their practicals, disruptive labs, and all those things are also coordinated mm. to make sure you get the desired results. Mm. Our cameras didn't reach him. We would have showed him so that everybody will see <laughs> that we have a ref in the Well, house. you can bring him <laughs> here just for <laughs> one minute or two. OK, <laughs> we'll, we'll try and do that. Yes. So I think let's now bring in another wing that, that is growing the African continent. Not long ago, I think Africa realized that the uh, diaspora is also one key contributor to uh, health growth. How well has the Gambia and the education community uh, leverage on the diaspora in terms of partnership and growth? Yes, um, as a country, the diaspora is participating above 21 percent of GDP in terms of remittances. Great. So they have they play a very strong role mm. in terms of their various contribution. Some of these issues. Some of these remittances go to construction and other industries in the country. Mm. So you have construction booming in the country as a result of these inflows. Mm. But that notwithstanding, the government has come up with a diaspora policy 
and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs responsible for the diaspora and there's a department for that. Then in addition to that also, we have periodic consultations with the diaspora. I think two weeks or last week, they had one in Gambia where diasporans will come and also contribute to the policy dialogue mm -hmm. to move the country forward. But then at the educational sector, we are also partnering because we have an initiative from International Organization for Migration. Okay. They, are, they are piloting a case where they bring in diasporans who are experts in certain skills area mm. for a particular period to either train or, or, or show some form of leadership and other things in other programs mm -hmm. uh, to Gambians mm. and then go back. So not in addition to that, also, you have a lot of diasporans coming back home, mm -hmm. setting up startups and the like. So right. I think they, they have a very important role to play in the yeah. economy. It's, I'm so glad that I mean, there is great advancement in work. I see vision in, vision in working. And I'm so happy for the youth and students of the Gambia. And I, I'll take, I'll take advantage if, if I get a chance. I believe that in the Gambia, I'm still getting the, the, the very best. As so just as your, your main task now is to go and get more students for us exactly to come and and, and uh, enroll in you said and other institutions in the Gambia. Great collaboration it will happen it has to happen yeah. thank you very much for your time more thank for you your time. thank you i think i'm wrapping up so you can be with me we'll take a photograph together okay uh, afterwards so um thank you very much for your time watching aau talks and AU TV as i discussed um the, uh, the transformative agenda of higher education in the gambia with the permanent secretary of higher education, which is the science ecology in the Gambia, and the person of more AK Seka. Have a nice day and keep watching AU TV. Bye. Bye.